Go, go ahead, Mark. No one wanted to grab me a hat, so we're going helmet today. <laughs> uh, Cooper, I wanted to know how much you attribute your success to to growing up uh, in an NFL family. Your dad, and your granddad. How often did you, you know, watch film together? Look, talk about techniques. Just talk the game, and and how much of the how much of that is really rubbed off in what you've been able to do. Yeah, I was so lucky. I got, you know, I'll take this off. You know, I really, I got the opportunity to have my dad who played quarterback in this league for a long time, um, have him be my, you know, be my receiver coach basically growing up. Um, and, uh, you know, he taught me basically everything there was to know about receiver until, you know, I got into, you know, an age where I was, you know, getting, you know, more coaching and stuff like that. So uh, we didn't necessarily watch film or do any of that stuff, but, uh, when we threw the ball around all the time and, uh, you know, he wasn't shy about, you know, saying what he liked as a, as a quarterback, what did he like to see in a receiver? I mean, I remember him coaching me through all the different routes and we, we, we worked the, uh, the route tree based on the numbers, uh, old school system. And, uh, you know, if I wasn't, you know, flashing my eyes on a double move or I wasn't giving him indicator steps or anything like that, you know, he let me know. Um, and so, you know, it was, it was a lot of fun. I, I loved it. I loved being able to learn um, and having a, a you know, my dad be that quarterback and be willing to share that stuff with me growing up uh, was a, you know, was a huge blessing for me. Thank you. Daisy. Cooper, what's it mean to you today to be named a unanimous all pro? Yeah, I mean, it's a, an, an uh, extraordinary honor. There's so many good players in this league. I got so much respect for the guys that um, around this league that, that just, you know, are very good football players. So just to, to be uh, to be on that list, uh, to be named to that team is an um, extraordinary honor. I don't take it lightly. And, uh, you know, it's, as I've touched on before, you know, it's, it's, just, it's truly, it takes a team. It takes a, a team to make kind of uh, those kinds of things happen. So i um, very thankful to be a part of the group that I am. Uh, the coaches that we have here, the work that they, they put in to be able to put us in good positions. And, um, you know, we get the, we get the fun part of just being able to go out there and, and play a game we love, um, execute to the best of our ability. So uh, very thankful for the people I have around me. And to earn the triple crown, what's that mean? Uh, again, I mean, I think it falls under, under that same category. I mean, it's certainly, it's never the, it's not the goal. You don't, I, I don't, I, it's not why I play this game. You know, I don't train in the off season so that I can, you know, achieve things for myself or like, you know, I'm not thinking of productive goal for what I want to accomplish. Um, you know, the goal is always just, you know, what am I going to be asked to do this year and how can I make sure that I execute it the best I possibly can, uh, prepare myself for that. And, um, you know, as those things, when those things come to fruition as they did this year, um, you know, the, on the personal side of things, you know, it really is just a product of, um, of, you know, coaches trusting to put me in positions to make plays for them. Um, and the guys across the board being able to execute enough to be able to get the ball out and um, give me an opportunity. So, um, you know, very thankful again for, for, the, for the guys I have here. Thanks. Modesty. Hey, Cooper, building on that a little bit, the coaches talk about how important it is to the Rams that, that you're all pros um, and other stars uh, set a good example for the rest of the team, show accountability. Do you remember um, – who you kind of learned that from? I mean, uh, when you were young, uh, at whatever level it was, was there somebody who, who uh, did things that uh, that that uh, are examples for what you do now? Um, yeah. Well, I, I thought you know I've, I've been very lucky. I've had a lot of. I mean, starting with my dad, and obviously the first example you get growing up is your parents, and you know the the example that my parents set for me in terms of how they, they raised their kids and uh, the values and um, uh, the values and uh, priorities that they instilled in us. Um, but then I also had a lot of coaches that were, you know, continued to coach regardless of, you know, what we accomplished no matter what we did. I've had coaches throughout my entire life that, that wanted to coach you and weren't going to shy away from coaching you no matter how good or bad you were. And, uh, I really appreciate that from, you know, from grid kids, you know, I've got my grid kids coach Lamont, Wright. You know, he was honest, you know, as, as kids, you know, about you know, holding us accountable and, and expecting us to be able to do our jobs. 
um, you know, you go into high school and, um, you know, Rick Clark, Jay Dumas, guys that um, coached us hard and uh, wanted the best for us. Um, you get into college and the coaches are the same thing. Coach Baldwin, you know, Junior Adams, Nick Edwards, uh, guys that uh, just continue to call us to this high standard where, you know, you wanted to be accountable to it. And you, you wanted to be able to say, hey, I can be better here and give me another chance to go out there and, and prove it and, and do it right. And, uh, you know, very thankful and very blessed for the people that have poured into me over the, uh, over the course of my lifetime. Yeah. Was there a, a star maybe on one of your early Rams teams who you looked at and said, that's how to be a star? Yeah, well, I think, you know, we've got one of the best in the business in Robert Woods. I was, I was very lucky to have Rob in our room with us um, the moment I got here. And I've, I've obviously touched a lot on how much respect I have for him and how he plays this game, um, you know, but he embodies that, you know, he wants to get coached too. He doesn't want to shy away. You know, he wants to be told, you know, how can I be better? How can he um, execute things better? How can he be, um, how can he be better, better for this team? And he's always taken that mindset. He's always practiced, um, practiced as if it was going to be his last. Um, and I just had so much respect for him when I came in here, uh, the way that he's carried himself. Um, you know, he did set a great example for everyone in that room. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, Jordan. Hey, Cooper. Um, first, first question, wondering how, I, I know in, in times like this, everybody, you know, you try to keep things the same, right? You try to go about your routine and don't make it more than what it is. How hard is it through the course of a long season like this? And then with all the chaos that's happened around you guys at times, how hard has it been to try to keep everything the same and keep yourself in that center lane? Yeah, well, it's it's uh it's difficult. I mean, uh, by no means is what we do an easy thing. The you know it's it's uh it's fun to go out and watch. You know, as a fan, it's like it's fun to watch football on Sundays and Mondays, Thursday nights, Saturdays. We get to the end of the year. It's fun to watch the games, um, but the amount of time you know we play a three-hour window. Um, and you know a lot of the times you talk about actual football being played, the actual football from you know, snap to whistle is really not very long. You know, you might have, I don't know, six to 10 minutes of actual football being played, but the amount of time that goes in during the course of a week of the preparation, um, the details that go in so that for that six minutes between snap and whistle, you can execute your job to the best of your ability. Um, it is extraordinary the, the difference in that ratio of the preparation time to the execution time. Um, it's, it's, it's incredible. So, um, you know, we, uh, it is a grind, but you, you have to love it. I mean, there's the guys that are playing in this league, the guys that are playing at a high level. Um, you have to love this game to be, um, to be competing at, at, at a high level. Like you are, all these teams are in the playoffs, um, for a reason it's because they have, have a process that they followed and they're con going to continue to follow that process. It's not easy. Um, but because you love this game, because you believe it's what you're made to do, the passions that you were given by God to, you know, go out and, and let shine on, on those Sundays. Um, you come in and you do the work and you do it joyfully. So, um, you know, it's hard, but it's, it's, a, it's a great time. And then um, how are you, if, you know, if you are, how are you bringing Robert into this experience this week with you or how is he in, in this experience yeah. with you? Yeah, so it was good. Actually, I mean, we get to see him a little bit. He was actually able to come to the game uh, this last week. Um, you know, obviously try to bounce things off of him whenever we can. Um, it was great being able to see him early this week. He does his rehab in the mornings. Um, but being able to come in and we were able to just kind of sit, stand around the training room and talk a little bit about kind of what he was seeing, um, what kind of his thoughts were um, as an outsider looking in, knowing everything about our offense. You know, that's a, it's a valuable perspective from someone that's looking um, from the outside in in that regard. So, um, you know, being able to just hear his perspective on things and be able to take that and try to, um, you know, make the changes that we need to and just kind of take uh, take uh, his his perspective and, and make it useful because, uh, you know, we always, always have a ton of respect for him and what he what he believes is best for this team. So um, it, it's great being able to just bounce ideas off of him and, and hear what he has to say. Thanks, Cooper. Yep. Jerry. Hey, Cooper. Um, given uh, your production season, just curious, were you running into, you know, different kinds of coverages and schemes that you had not seen before in terms of teams attempt to stop you and you anticipate more of that in the playoffs. 
Yeah. Um, first off, I love your lighting, Gary. It looks, it looks <laughs> great. Um, uh, yeah, you know, there is some, some, obviously this year we've had some, uh, some crazy stuff has gone on We're seeing some different coverages. We've seen some guys do, uh, you've seen some doubles here and there. You see, you know, lending body presence and, um, you know, it's been, uh, it's been fun kind of seeing those things and trying to figure out ways to attack them. But at the same time, you, can, you don't see it a ton because um, you know, you've got Odell, you got Van, Ben Strunk, you got guys on this team that can make plays for you. It just makes it really hard to try to take, you know, one guy out of this game. Um, you know, Odell is a great job. You know, Odell still gets cloud quite a bit. Um, you know, the, the resume he's put forward in, over the course of his career, guys have a lot of respect for him. So um, it, just, it just makes it hard when you've got guys across the board that can make plays for you. Thank you. Yeah. Hey, Cooper, uh, for a coaching staff, seeing a team for a third time, there's such a balance between scheme and tendencies. For you, how much is that balance? Is that more during the week in, in all the preparation and or how much of it is actually in game action? Yeah, I think there is a good balance of that. You know, um, it's kind of like, you know, when you go against, uh, you go against guys on the practice squad, you know, we go against those guys every single day. What's, what's tough to do is, you know, you start running your, your plays against them and you start to run your, you start to compete as a receiver. I start competing against the DB who I've seen and run countless reps against instead of running, you know, like, Hey, let's run this, this concept based on what we're going to expect to see and how we want this to play out, you know, and, uh, you know, that can happen as you start getting more and more reps against people. Um, so there is a balance there trying to play off of the person as much as it is playing the scheme. Um, you know, there's, there's definitely a balance, but, uh, you know, I think the, the great thing is this is a game of, um, you know, who, who can be quickest to adapt to things. And, um, you know, we got to be ready for whatever it is that the Cardinals are going to throw at us based on what they've shown us before, what they might do, what's worked for them in the past or what hasn't worked that they want to make work. Um, there's a lot of directions that, that people can go as you, you, know, you play a cat, cat and mouse game of trying to be ahead of ahead of the curve of the other team. So um, you know, we just got to be adaptable, be ready to, to uh, be on, move on the fly. And, you know, the great thing is you got players, um, the expectations that you're able to adapt on the fly and find ways to win against the person um, and, uh, you know, make plays work, you know, try to be a, we all, everyone on this team, try to be a, a player that gives you the widest range of um, successful outcomes, uh, regardless of what the defense gives you. Appreciate it. Hey, uh, congratulations on the awards and good luck Monday. Hey, thank you very much. Appreciate it. All right, we'll wrap up with Brady and then Steve. Hi, Cooper. Uh, Brady Henderson from ESPN, uh, based out in Seattle. Uh, wondering, how often do you get back to Yakima? And uh, just given the profile that you've built up, what's it like when you go back? How, how often do you get recognized and whatnot? You know, I really haven't been back in a while. So I had, um, you know, so we had the ACL tear my second year. We come back, uh, you know, play that third year. And the off season after that third year, we end up going into the COVID stuff. So, you know, you are really aren't able to travel a ton. And we've been dealing with that for the last two off seasons. So I really haven't been back. I've really wanted to get some stuff going back there, um, you know, get a football camp going and be able to go back and just, uh, you know, be a part of that community. Um, it's just been really hard with uh, the nature of the world right now and COVID and just not being able to do some of that stuff. So um, it's been tough not being able to get back there, but I look forward to the opportunities when, when we, finally, we uh, finally can. Thank you. Mm -hmm. you, Steve. Hey, Cooper, when I talk to defensive coaches, you know, about you, it keeps on coming back at some point to how well you block and how you set up your blocks and how technical and precise you are and physical. Are you finding more as you get into the season or whatever that you're able to set up pass routes now with alignments that you typically block out of, or if you can chip a guy in spring and they're and you're hitting with something they're not expecting in the mm -hmm. passing game because of what you've done in the run game? Uh, I think that's kind of the foundation of what we do here is, you know, things that start off looking the same, they're different. I don't know. How, I think Sean's probably got it plastered up on his wall at his house somewhere. Um, you know, that's just the mantra that he lives by. So the more plays that you can look, make look the same that end up being different. I think that's kind of been what we've done five years. So um, certainly it helps out. Um, you know, I've loved being able, being able to be a part of the run game stuff more, um, being able to work with the linemen and the, you know, learning the second language that is offensive line talk, um, working in combinations with some of those guys. And just, uh, it's just a lot of fun. It's been a, a new piece of this game that you know, I've been playing this game now for uh, 20 years. And it's the first time being able to be a part of that kind of thing as intricately and as, 
as uh, you know, immersed in it as much as I ever have been. So it's been, it's been a lot of fun learning that stuff this year. So you're actually in meeting rooms at times with the OL. Uh, no, not meeting rooms, but we do the meetings on the field, you know, being able to get out there and walk through stuff together and be able to do stuff on the side, be in communication with them, um, you know, being able to be a part of that blocking surface and communicate with, uh, with Brian, with, um, with Rob Havenstein, with, with Whitworth, Corbs, and Big Dave. And um, it's just been, it's been a lot of fun. Thanks a lot. Congratulations, mm -hmm. by the way. Thank you. Well, we appreciate you, sir. Yes, sir. All right. Thank you, guys.